What's up, nerds and nerdettes? Salutations from Big Johnny G, the great Grognard. I'm here today with you. We're going to do something new. This is the first one in a new segment, How to Play. And for this first one, we're going to be going over How to Play Odin's Ravens by Osprey Games. It's a mythical race for two players. This is a two-player game only. Uh, so let's go off. You're going to be uh, getting the box here. Opens up really nice. I like the way Osprey is doing their boxes. The rules, obviously I'll be going over them, but to show you it's really not a lot. You know, we have, uh, this page is nothing. This page is extra stuff uh, after you learn to play the game. So technically we got the one on the back, two and three. This is just components. So really, technically, you're only reading three pages that have some great photos on them, some great examples, so it's barely three pages of instructions. Not a tough game, but uh, you're going to be watching the video afterwards or even before. I still urge you to read the instructions. Just because you watch my video or someone else's video, uh, you should still read the instructions on your own. But let's put that aside. And the first thing you're going to do is a two-player game is each player is going to be getting a deck of cards and they're going to be getting their raven meeple, Hunan and Munin to go along with it. These cards I'll get to in a moment and then the box is good. So I uh, also wanted to say everyone welcome back, thank you for tuning in and watching another episode uh, of Two Gun Pixies Legendary Gaming. It's always great to have everyone back. Thank you all for subscribing and liking the videos and sharing them. All right, so now this here, this is, a, this is the land deck. And for the game, what you're going to do in a standard game, you use 16 cards. I'm not going to place all 16 out now at the moment. Uh, but what you do, uh, you shuffle the cards up like you do in any card game, just about, unless it tells you otherwise, always assume uh, that you're probably going to be shuffling cards. So this is what we're doing. Give it a quick little shuffle here. Now you're going to be laying out the cards. How many you choose. If you use the 16 to start with, or if you want a shorter game or a longer game, then you may be altering how many cards that you're going to be putting down. Uh, yeah, there's going to be some big changes here, folks. I'll show you in a moment. There's going to be some big changes here. All right, so put one more down. Ah, another big change. All right. Now, I've been playing this game a heck of a lot. So on top of the shuffling, I'm surprised I got so many that are in the same position. So you lay out your 16 cards, however many you're using for the land cards. Now, anytime you have something that is the same, that is next to something the same, you have to change it. You can't start the game with two similar land types next to each other. So the first option to change something is you flip it. So that's good now. Here, you can flip this. No, you can't. Because you have, still have two on this side. So you're going to take this card out. You're going to draw up another one. Much better. Much better. And this is okay, because they don't line up right away. So that's fine. This is okay. They're not next to each other. This, however, we have to change that up. And you continue doing that through the entire run of the cards that you're choosing to use. Now the rest of the cards you're going to leave on the side because you're going to be going back to this pile uh, during the course of the game. Now each player, as I said, has an identical set of cards. And you're going to set your little raven meeples up right in front of the board and I will show you the deck. And we got some mixed up in here still from the last game. Okay. There we go. So you're going to take out your seven Loki cards, because you have two decks. Each player has two decks that they're going to be using. So during the game, you get a choice to choose from. I'll get to that in a moment. So each player has his deck. You shuffle them both, so you have no idea what cards you're going to be drawing from. Now the initial hand, you know what, that's always my biggest question in every game I play is the initial draw hand. I think it's five. Yes, five cards. Now, when you're choosing your five cards, this again goes for both players. This goes for both players. When you're choosing your five cards, you can uh, choose uh, any order. You can take three from here, two from here, four and one, all five, all five, 
uh, however you want. Uh, the more you play the game, the more you're going to come up with your own tactics. Uh, I usually like to start the game with three and two. Now, you don't let the other player see your cards. I'm showing these here to you guys. And then uh, my two Loki cards. And I get to them too. The Loki cards really what bring in the highest amount of strategy in this game. It doesn't look like there's a lot, but, but there is. So, this is my hand here. Got a forest. I got a wasteland, and I got a tundra. And my two Loki cards, my two Loki cards, each Loki card has uh, two different options that you can choose from during play. Uh, so you get to choose the option on the top or the option on the bottom. And really, there's, uh, as you can see, there's no, other than the rule book itself, there's no written words on these cards at all. You just learn the images, you learn the iconography, it's really very easy. So this card here, if I wanted to use this card, I could flip a card. And then this is discarded. You never get the Loki cards back. Never. Your flight cards, you get those back, they reshuffle. Loki cards are gone for good. Now if I had opted for the bottom one, if I had opted for that bottom one with the X out, then I could just take a card out completely. And you just ignore this spot. But I'll get to that when we get to the movement. Uh, the other card, now this threw us off the first time we played it. If you take a look at the other card, uh, the swap. Now when we first played this, we thought that that meant that you could only swap cards like it shows in the picture, like that. Because it shows one and one. Actually, that's not the case. Anywhere in the line, you can swap. Uh, and the other one is one of the more interesting options that you have. You actually lower a piece. You don't remove it, but you lower it. So in this case, the uh, the raven on this flight path then doesn't have to worry about this spot. If he gets here, then he can jump to right there, uh, while this guy has a completely different terrain coming up. He may have had plans for something else, and now that's changed. Um, but those are the Loki cards. That's what they do. The flight cards... I'm getting get to right now because this is the, uh, the actual bulk of the of the game itself. Now, after you choose your first player, what's going to happen is you're going to look at your cards. I just showed you the Loki cards, so I would look at these cards here. I'll put this back a little bit so things aren't matching up completely. That's good. So I look at my cards here, and I see that I got three flight cards: a forest, a wasteland, and a tundra. Now, right in front of me, I got nothing. So unless I was going to use a Loki card, which I could do, start the game off with the Loki card, I could switch up and then use my Tundra card, goes into the discard pile, and I'm able to move the one space forward. Um, now during the course of the game, if you have a card through manipulation of Loki cards, the Loki deck, changing things up, maybe you've change the path up so it looks something like this. So now if I had played my one Tundra card, then instead of moving the one space, I would be able to move all the way to the end with that one card. Now we made that mistake, as I said, the first time that we played the game, and uh, it did make a big difference the next time that we played. Now the other option is, let's say this was my start. I don't have a card. I don't have a planes, a field, whatever you want to call that. I don't have one of those. Uh, I could, if I choose, other than using a Loki option, if I didn't have any Loki cards or nothing that could help me at the moment, then what I could do is I could take any two, doesn't matter if they match or not, take any two of these cards, put them in my discard pile after I grow some fingernails, and then I could move the one space. Now, that's the way the game is going to run. The game is going to run that way. Both players on both sides are going to be playing their cards. They're going to be moving their pieces one or several along the way. Loki cards are going to come out, uh, as I told you, and they're going to end up affecting change to the board as the game is being played. Now, the reason I'm doing this and pointing this out to you is... Uh, let me find another Loki card here we find very interesting. This one here, yeah, this is... Let's say during the course of the game, this Loki card got played... Uh, the bridge card. Uh, this is one of those cases when you would draw from the deck again. You would draw one from the top of the deck and you would uh, put it down. Just as the picture shows, creating a bridge. 
Now, at this point, if I had gotten up to here and my opponent did that to me, I could not move directly into the plains. What I would have to do is from here is move to a forest, to another forest, and then a card to play me to get to the plains. We really hate these cards. But uh, some of the Loki cards also allow you to move players forward, move players backwards. Now, one thing, if you're playing a Loki card, uh, if you're playing a Loki card that affects, that affects like uh, this card right here. If I wanted to play this card right here, and this was the setup at the moment, I could not use that card on either of these. Uh, you cannot change terrain cards, even with Loki cards, if there is already either uh, another raven on it, yourself or the other raven on it, or if you had a bridge card out, and it was overlapping. Anything that changes or moves a card cannot happen if there is one of your raven meeples on it. Uh, I just wanted to bring that up. But now, you get to the end, you get to the end here, and you still have to get back to where you started. And the rules point out, there's a very simple picture, but I've read a lot of people online actually arguing about this, and I don't understand why, especially with the picture there. But what happens is, this raven here, the next move, he would come back on this side. He's racing around in a circle. Same thing with this guy here. He has to come around to this side. Now, when you think about that for a moment, every card that you've played previously to either help you or to hinder your opponent is now doing the opposite. So all the cards that helped you up here and messed with your opponent down here are now messing with you and possibly helping him or her, the other player. Uh, and that's where a lot of the strategy comes in with the game is looking at the cards that you have in your hand, how they're going to be uh, uh, usable for you during the gameplay and the terrain, and what Loki cards that you have that you're going to use to change the terrain to maximize your movement. Um, and keeping in mind that it's all going to come back and bite you in the butt at the end. Uh, and really, that's the whole game. This is a very simple game. You can pick this game up very easily, bring it to a person's house, show them how to play in a couple of minutes, just like I did. There's no dice involved. There's no heavy reading involved. Look at the cards. Pretty much just match the card up that you're playing. Use the Loki cards to mess with the board a little bit, mess with the other players, and get back to where you started from. Very simple game. Very fun game. Everyone I've turned this game on to, whether it's my regular 20-sided warrior uh, gaming group, whether it's my casual gaming friends, friends of mine that don't even really play games at all, everyone has really loved this game, uh, which is why I wanted to show it off, get, do the how-to play, very easy to run, very easy to carry with you, and that's about all there is to tell. So I'm Big Johnny G for Two Gun Pixies Legendary Gaming, how to play Odin's Ravens. So subscribe to our channel, like us, share the stuff that you like, and check us out on Facebook. All right, everyone, I'm out of here.